and welcome back to Heiner Builds Your Ride. Today we've got, I think, one of the coolest Land Cruiser 76 series that we had in the shop. This has got everything in it. Such a cool build, I'm excited about it. But first, before we get into the details, let's roll the intro. As you can see in the front, we've got the aerial for the XRS 370 GMA two-way radio. We've got our favorite lights on here, the laser lamp Sentinel light up there. We've got a laser lamp linear bar light for a good spread. Really good light by that one. Even though it's just the 18 inch, it's got the same output power as the 36 inch. Brilliant light by that one, because that's the Elite series of the 18 inch light bar. Then we've got a one winch here. We've already pre-wired this plug here for a light bar that will go in here in the future. You've got your winch coming out down here. And then under the bonnet, there's a lot of stuff to talk about right here already. We have got an isolator for the winch. This is a 300 amp continuous duty isolator that has usually been used for trucks. That is the only isolator, mechanical isolator that I know of that can actually cope with a longer period of winching. Everything else will just fail eventually. So we always go overboard with this to make sure that your winch actually works later on. Then, and you can't see that right now, but there's a Rapid Power Endura 250 amp alternator. This is hooked up with the zero BNS cable 300 amp fuse on our custom fuse holder. We generally put everything here, the winch isolator and also the fuse holder, but there's a catch can here already. So we had to get a bit inventive about it. And you can see here it's labeled, the alternator feeds directly to the start battery now. Winch is hooked up here. And then we've got our twin MIDI fuse holder that is supplying the DC hub and the rear Anderson plug in the vehicle. Now, when this vehicle came in, a lot of the wiring was done to battery positive because it had a little, some bits and pieces on it already. What we have done is we relocated all the wiring into the factory accessory fuse box, labeled it, even there's a rust proofing system in here that was in there already before. So that is put in here as well. Then we've got our relays down there for the light bar, the Sentinel lights. That's about it, under the bonnet. Let's close this back up, because it looks a lot better with the bonnet down. Great car. 
Let's go around this way. Like I said, we've got the light bar up the top there. <clears throat> then we've got the Hella Rock 155 work lights on the side, switchable from the cab. We've got switches for the light bar and the bull bar driving lights right here next to the steering wheel. I'll show you the other switches for the roof lights later on. Over here, this vehicle has a rear seat delete. You have got some storage area in here. You can see, you can store a few things. This rear fit out has been designed and fabricated by Custom Overland Solutions by Rob and Chris. They've done a brilliant job with it. There's a stainless steel tank in here. Over there, there's the charge station where you got the Victron BMV 712 battery monitor. We've got an Anderson plug on the bottom for charging, two accessory sockets, two twin USB sockets. And on top there, you've got the Hella light that is dimmable and it switches in between red and white. Cargo barrier in here. Then if we go further towards the back, let's keep on going up the top here. We've put all the cables that go to the roof through the third brake light. It's a 12 core cable going to the roof, which has got a Deutsch plug here so you can disconnect the whole roof. There's Deutsch plugs here for the rear lights that will be put on in the future after the 27 degree awning has been put onto this car. Everything runs into an aluminum junction box down here. So all the roof rack wiring joins together in here, just in case you have to ever replace something. It's just a single cable that you can take out and put back in. Not all the lights are on here yet, so there'll be lights on the other side as well. But same thing, they will only go on once the awning goes on. We've also got a National Lunar light back here, our dimmable orange and white light. You just hold it for a little bit longer and it switches to white and you got three dimming settings on each of them. Then we've put a camera here as well. A rear view camera because you can't really see a lot out of the back anymore. So the mirror has been replaced with a screen and you can now, once you're driving, the camera turns on, the screen turns on and you can still see out the back of your window. Then in the back here, this whole system has been installed by Medica. They are a company here in Perth as well. They've put a fridge slide and a fridge in. It's actually quite a nice system from OIS. I quite like that, it's a really handy system. We've wired everything up. You've got a table in here that you can pull out. Travel buddy up the top here, it's not bolted down. We keep it mobile in this setup so it can actually be used everywhere. You've got your travel buddy here as well. The customer is gonna mount that later on exactly where he wants it. So there's plenty of length on it and later on you just have to put the brackets in the side screw them in mission accomplished for that one then here you've got your water outlet your water pump switch the water pump as you can see is in the side wing and so is the air tank for the arb compressor i close that also on the side there we've got the 1200 watt victron inverter and it all runs together in this spot here. <clears throat> in here is where all the electrical magic happens. So we've got the Klarman switch panel where we can put the lights on and off. So over here, there will be a white and orange Nava light that is IP67 rated. That will be here to light up this whole awning area later on. And you've got two switches here one to turn on the white light and one to turn on the orange light on that. Then you can turn the compressor on and off and you can turn the inverter on and off. You've got your power board here, so if you want to charge things, you can light them down here. You've got your compressor outlet here as well. And you've got your solar input just here. And in here, you have got your main fuses for the inverter and for the DC hub which I'll show you in a minute. And you've got a 200 amp hour Amtron 
lithium battery with 175 amp maximum discharge and your ARB twin piston compressor. Quite compact in this one. Was not easy, but the workshop crew has done a fabulous job. Really, everybody who was involved with this has done such an amazing job. As I said before, you've got the Hella light here. You've got the settings on white with the dim, uh, different brightnesses. And then if you keep turning it, you've also got red with different brightness levels. Quite handy this one, especially if you put it on red in the bush, you almost attract no midges whatsoever. I'll put this cover back on. Rob and Chris make these so well. And in here is where we've got the DC hub. So all the fusing, everything happens in here. As you can see, the heart of this build, all the wiring comes together here. Your lithium battery comes in here, start battery comes in there, solar is connected here, your DC-DC charger, which sits on the side here, it's a Red Arc 1250D unit that's mounted to the side, that goes in there, and all your DC from the whole system, every DC circuit connects to this board. You put the fuses in, you even got spare fuses on the board, and you're good to go with everything in here. And just in case you're ever looking for any faults in your system, which I hope never happens, but you know, you gotta be prepared, all the fault finding can be done right here. Every circuit is accessible right in here. Makes this such a compact build. Nice and neat. I really like it. Such a great build, this one. And then, if you don't have anything to do with it, you can just close it back up. And that's it. As you can see here, this panel with the ashtray in it got replaced with the PVS panel, so we get extra spots for the switches that we install. We've also in installed the Red Arc Tor Pro, and these three switches are for work lights on the left-hand side, work lights on the right-hand side, and work lights on the rear. You also get your UHF RJ45 pass through, so you can plug in your UHF handpiece when you want to use it, and when you don't want to use it, you can just take it off, leave it in the glove box if you want to. Also, what I've talked about before, this is the rear view mirror. That is now a camera. So the camera that we saw in the back before, that is connected to this screen. But there's more functionality to this screen. So what you can do is as soon as you turn the car on, screen turns on, you see out the back of the car. But it's also got a camera on the front. And if you put a micro SD card in here, this unit, as soon as it turns on, will start recording from the front and from the rear camera. So it's a rear view camera, but at the same time, it's a front and rear dash cam. We mount that here with the ram mount, so you can adjust the mirror in all possible angles, and it just blends in as if, as if this would have been in here from factory. I think we've covered it pretty much. Let's go to the back again. There's still some cables hanging out the back. This is for a rear Anderson plug. This is for trailer plug and tow pro and everything. This will still get a twin wheel carrier, which hasn't been available yet. So we did all the wiring so far and the rest will be done in the future once the rear bar is in here. This one here has been a complete design by Luke and Luke orchestrated the whole workshop team. And I just want to say compliments to the whole team and also to Luke for making such a great build. It's probably one of the nicest 76 I have ever seen. Just leaves us with one thing to do. Our patch of approval, as you know, this one here is now ready to drive anywhere. Thanks and see you for the next one.